Good morning, boys and girls. I'm Miss Lydia from the Boston Library. Thank you so much for joining me for story time today. Today, I wanted to share with you two beautiful new books that we have at the Boston Library. The first story is called Seeds by Carme Lemniscates. Seeds carry the power of life, so they embark on amazing adventures. Some take off to distant lands. Others wait to be carried to their destiny. Do you see our ants and other bugs underground? Once they find their place, seeds go through breathtaking transformations. Here it is just starting and up pop two little leaves and then it grows and grows. Seeds have the power to multiply in number. One pumpkin seed brings dozens of pumpkins. And each pumpkin brings hundreds of seeds. Do you see all the seeds inside that pumpkin? Seeds have the power to multiply in size. The tiniest seed in the world sprouts a beautiful orchid. Seeds have the power to grow in difficult places. They can thrive despite all the odds. Here we see all sorts of plants growing in the concrete. When we sow a seed, we take part in this amazing cycle. And we can plant many different kinds of seeds. A smile is a powerful seed. One that can bring joy and friendship. And there they are working together. But there are also seeds that bring anger and misunderstanding. When those seeds grow, they pull us apart. And now they're fighting. Seeds can only bring what they carry. Pumpkin seeds bring pumpkins. Kindness seeds bring kindness. You have lots of seeds, and you get to decide which ones to plant and which ones to help grow. Seeds have whole worlds inside them, just like you. The next book I'd like to share with you is called The Keeper of Wild Words by Brooke Smith. Now the author tells us at the end of this book that this book was actually inspired by the fact that the Oxford Junior Dictionary removed over a hundred natural words from its pages. They felt that these words no longer had relevance for today's children. And so she wrote this book to show how important they are. At the end of a long cinder lane, surrounded by meadows and pine trees and sky, that wrapped around and back again. Brooke ran up to her grandmother's door, swung it open, and she belonged. Mimi, I'm here. Brooke called her grandma Mimi. She wasn't just a grandmother, she was a grand friend. Mimi had been waiting. She'd been sitting at her desk all day, distracted by a hummingbird, a wasp's nest, a red-tailed hawk hovering overhead. Mimi was a writer. She wove words into everything, everything that mattered. Brooke was so excited to be visiting. She needed Mimi's help. Tomorrow was the first day of school and Brooke had nothing for show and tell. Her summer had been wonderful, but she didn't have one special thing to share that her friends would always remember. But today, Mimi needed Brooke's help too. She had something important to ask her. I'm afraid some of my favorite words are disappearing. Some of the wild words that I've known and loved my whole life. 
How do words disappear? Brooke wondered. Words disappear if we don't share them when we talk, if we don't write them in our stories, if we don't read them in our books. If we don't use words, they can be forgotten. And if they're forgotten, they disappear. I need someone to keep them safe, she continued, to help remember. I need you to be my keeper, the keeper of wild words. Can I wear a crown? Brooke asked. No, Mimi laughed. The keeper doesn't need a crown. She just needs to keep her eyes wide open and be ready to see and hear and feel all the wild words. That way, she'll always remember them. Look, and here is her list of wild words. We have acorn, apricot, beaver, blackberry, buttercup, dandelion, doe, drake, fern, lavender, minnow, mint, monarch, poppy, porcupine, starling, violet, willow, and wren. From sunup to sundown, we'll walk and run and walk again. Sit and wait, listen and touch until we find every word on the list, said Mimi, or every word on the list finds us. I'm ready, said Brooke, and they were off. And sure enough, as soon as they'd stepped into the morning, wild words were waiting. A wren sang a good morning song, a little brown bird with a voice like an angel, sitting up high, looking down, just waiting to say hello to the world. Bunches of violets spread underfoot. Sweet perfume filled the air, almost making Brooke dizzy. Their little purple faces smiled, inviting the day to begin. You can see our violets down there. Poppies in the corner of the yard suddenly popped open, paper petals reaching to the sun. And bushes filled with blackberries, just like the ones Brooke had eaten for breakfast. Hundreds still waiting to be picked and enjoyed for dessert. Do wild words dance like this every morning? Along the way, Brooke picked up an acorn that fell from a mighty oak. Big towering oak tree, little nut with a tiny brown hat, smooth round shell. She put it in her pocket to remember. Up ahead, they saw light reflected in a round mirror of water, the pond. When Brooke scooped up a handful of water, silver minnows swam circles in her palm, now a pool. Whoever knew she could hold the wild. Then splash, silence broken. A beaver jumped in and then under he went, swimming towards his den, climbing up on the other side of the pond and then disappearing from view. It's sure busy around here, Brooke said. Always, Mimi answered. Bushels of mint surrounded the pond. Mimi picked stems and rubbed the leaves in her fingers. Brooke picked a leaf and put it in her mouth. Fresh, sweet, tangy. From the ground, from the earth, she could taste the wild. Then one last visitor waddled by. Green velvet head, bright yellow beak, Mr. Drake. Papa Duck running, quack, run, lift off, wings out, and there he goes. Where next? The meadow? Just follow the trail, cut deep into the into the tall grass. Brooke ran ahead, so free. A butterfly, a monarch, diving in the breeze. Now you are just like me. Bright buttercups welcomed them. Yellow petals glistened in the sun. A carpet of, a wild carpet of light and beauty. Quick, make a wish, said Mimi, holding out a dandelion fairy dust sitting on a stem. Blow on it and the seeds will fly, your tiny wishes in the air. 
At the top of the meadow stood an old willow tree. The shade of the willow was like a dear friend. Mimi had known this tree forever. What a perfect place to have lunch, Mimi said. She took out small sandwiches and apricots picked from her yard, round fuzzy fruit, sweet as could be, the juice dripping with every bite. Rows of lavender lined the field below, filling the air with a magic perfume. See our lavender plants down there? Just then, overhead, Brooke could not believe her eyes. There's a bird cloud flying above us. Oh my, Mimi said, the starlings are back. Such an amazing wonder. See all those birds? Thousands of birds swooped, darted, and turned, somehow always staying connected. And then they floated away as mysteriously as they came. Finally, they wandered over to the dense, dark wood. Brooke had always been a little afraid of the forest, but now part of her was wild and she couldn't wait. A light rain started to fall, sudden summer shower. The rain made the smell of the forest come alive and all the plants glisten. The ferns with their magnificent green feathered leaves curled up and then spread out like a fan for everyone to notice. What else do you see? Mimi asked. Brooke looked across the forest floor and sure enough, nestled in the needles was a doe, a deer, curled up like a fern, fast asleep in the shadows. Quiet, quiet, peace and quiet. Walk slowly by, we'll let her be. In the woods, things appear around corners, tucked deep. Ahead, they heard a rustling. Stop, Mimi said. Walk back slowly towards me. Right then, a porcupine popped out and ran up a tree. Porcupines, if they're scared, will let their quills fly. Surprises abound in the wild. Mimi had one other surprise. You know, my favorite wild word is not on the list, she said. It's standing right in front of me. A gurgling sound was coming from a clearing, light flickering on a glassy surface. It was a small stream, a brook. Dancing, sparkling, singing, it knew exactly where it was going. Joyful thread of water cutting through the trees. The last wild word is you, Mimi said. You were named after this tiny stream that your mother always cherished. One could only imagine such a perfect name for the keeper of wild words. Mimi, I never told you what I needed help with, Brooke said. What is it? Mimi asked. I need something special for show and tell tomorrow. And now? I have it. The night sky would soon be painted, stars gleaming overhead, a beautiful wild curtain closing on the day. Mimi's wild words were safe. They were shared and remembered, understood, deeply loved. When the wild wraps around you, it stays forever in your heart. And that's the end. Now I think a perfect activity for the day would be to make your own list of wild words and see what you can spot for yourself. I hope you enjoyed our stories for today. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you all next week.